Hello, us. Hi, everyone. Us. Torbjörn. Us. Look, Torbjörn. Cool shirt I got on. The Young Lions of Lawrence Cook. Lawrence Cook. I see you guys are training in the nice warm weather. What is it, eight degrees? <laughs> it was actually eight degrees here last night, wasn't it? Yeah. You remember Scotty? Us. Scotty's back again. He was just hanging every every Friday. He kind of puts his gear on and hangs around outside, <laughs> hoping that I'd invite him in. But today, I just felt sorry for him, so I had to. But anyway, he's going to be a big help today. Ken, us, good to see you. Frederick, Matus, us. Hey, Rochelle. Daniel, us, good to see you. Hey, Brad, <laughs> how you feeling? My buddy Brad there caught a dose of the uh, COVID. He's been in hospital so i hope you're well you're out home all that us rob if it's eight degrees up here it must be chilly down where you are six degrees oh okay that's nice and warm then us gaza everybody gary mccausland there he did his 40 man kumite on uh saturday for his black belt did a really good job marco us so anyway look thanks for coming along we've got some great stuff today honestly pinan 2 it's one of my favorite kata for the applications, particularly when you see it in terms of uh, block, lock, blow, throw. I've actually done some seminars, like four, three, four hour seminars on Pinan 2, basically. There is so much in it that uh, it's, it's really worth having a look at. So today, what we're going to do is have, have a look. Oh, Where do I know you from? <laughs> Harry was just up here visiting. A little while ago today but anyway look i'm just going to put some notes here so i don't lose track but one of the important things to remember too about a lot of this stuff is that um ah, it'll stay there is there's horses for courses i don't know if that's the right metaphor but um us raj kumar namaste good to see you um but there's times for really really serious dealing with confrontation and there's times where you just want to deal with it safely and not necessarily hurt the guy or the girl you know i mean this is one of the problems we see in america at the moment is you know police get in trouble for shooting someone but then when you look at the whole story that person was about to stab someone to death all right well if they weren't about to stab him to death or something like that you know um i don't want to go down a political tunnel here but the point is you have to look at everything in context and uh, bunkai applications in Qatar offer a whole range of possibilities um, depending on that level of violence. And one way you can look at that is, is see it in terms of traffic lights, a red light, orange light, green light situations. They all vary. Hey, Paddy Pinto, how are you, man? In and out, but looking forward to the session. Nice to see you. Paddy's doing great work at the Kogashin Shuffle there. Um, don't forget to get along. And also KRT, the boys in in uh, Europe, uh, Wes and uh, Dazzle, they do great work there too. Look for the KRT channel, um, Paddy and his Kyokushin Shuffle. There's so much going on. And it's a perfect example of why every cloud has a silver lining. You know, this COVID has created some amazing opportunities for us. Kylie Baker got me this mug, and I can tell you it's 100% <laughs> my go-to mug now. It's just like, what are you laughing at? I'm serious. I can't help it. All my other mugs have kind of gone to the wayside because um, this keeps the tea warm for hours. It's so good. So anyway, we've got to look at that. For example, when we look at a block, lock, throw, blow, you see the certain movements in the kata. See, in... I want to talk about Kaisei, Kaisei no Gendi. Where's my book? Yeah. Where did I put it? Oh, there we go. Okay, Kaisei no Gendi, if you, if you, I really went into depth in this new concept, which I kind of introduced to the Kyokushin world because it hasn't really been spoken of much previously. Page 200, it starts, Kaisei no Gendi. Now, in Kaisei no Gendi, Kaisei basically means just uh, untying not points you know you get a, a knot you get a point in a card and it just doesn't make a lot of sense and so the process of working with someone to untie the potential and possibilities is what we call kaisai and that they call it kaisai kumite where you'll have 
it's a form of yaksoku kumite. What's yaksoku kumite? Yaksoku means prearranged. Okay, when you make a yaksoku in Japan, it means you make a a, a promise. So prearranged yaksoku kumite is kumite where the moves are prearranged. I know that he's going to punch me in the head so I can block it safely. But kaisei no kumite is taking that yaksoku kumite and using techniques from kata. So yaksoku kumite can be anything. It can just be a middle punch over and over. But uh, uh, responding to the technique uh, out of by using techniques out of the kata is what you could call kaisei no kumite. And arguably, and I even wrote this in the book, uh, there, there is argument to say that kaisei kumite or that two-man drilling existed before kata. Kata actually evolved out of that. So if you could imagine two guys going, well, what about if they do this? Yeah, well, maybe we could do this. What about if they do that? Yeah, but they do that. What about but? Then you go, okay, well, let's put that together in a flow. Next thing you know, you've got, you're going bang, bang, out of, oh, and then you come this way, and the next thing you know, you've got the beginning of a kata, okay? And then the kata evolves out of that. Now, the other thing too is, when remember I've, I've spoken about that time, so I was asked about Gokui, Gokui, the hidden secret techniques, and so I said the only secret is sweat. You know, well, what he means that, what he me means, hey, Doctor G, you have to tell me what your surname is, Dave. Let me know, but thanks for coming along. You know, um, when Solsai says the only secret is sweat, I mean it's a metaphor that's that's it's it's a it's a idiom that's thrown around all the time. People talk about it all the time, but really, I don't know that lots and lots of people really understand what it means. It doesn't just mean putting your head down and tail up and training as hard as you can. It means the toil, the sweat and toil of trying to understand the deeper meanings of everything that you're doing. So even a retraction of the hand. Well, what does that even mean? Because the reality is in a real fight, you're not going to be retracting your hand so much. So it has a different application. What application can, are there times where the, the, the retraction works? Definitely, you know. So kaisai kumite is where you get together with someone and you basically do two-man movements out of kata to try and pull them apart. So, and in Pinan 2 offers some really, really, really good stuff for that, you know. So, um, for example... I'm going to show you a, a couple of movements out of uh, Pinan 2 um, as we go along. I'll try to make, look, I say this every week, I'll try to make it short and sweet, and then we end up going for an hour. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm charging. <laughs> okay, so the whole idea of Kaisei, you look in the book, page 200, it talks about Kaisei, is the process of finding the hidden techniques that Solsai talked about. They said, are there any hidden techniques? He said, no, there's only sweat. Then later on he said, actually, there are hidden techniques, but the only way to find them is through the sweat of hard training because someone can tell you about it, but unless you've practiced it over and over and over, it doesn't mean anything anymore. So this movement here out of the kata, you know, well, you do that. But if you want to get an idea of the kata, you need to break it down, right? That's what bunkai means. Bunkai means to break down. The word bunkai sudo, or the verb bunkai sudo in Japanese, means to compartmentalize, break it down into its compartments. Okay? So, oh, Dave, <laughs> how are you, man? Thanks for coming along. Us. Um, so, if it takes three to 10,000 repetitions of a kata to get a clear understanding and mastery of it, well, then it takes another 1,000 repetitions of each of those techniques broken down to get a feel of the application. And you do that through uh, kaisei kumite or, or kumite designed to unravel the knot points within the kata. That's so valuable and so important, okay? And the whole thing comes down to um, an acronym. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? I told you everything has an acronym, but we call it Vanco. It's it's uh, Vanco is um, is the the techniques 
capability versus a non-compliant opponent. So you have to ask yourself, there are certain techniques which work really well when the guy steps through with a really formal middle punch, but what happens if he decides he's going to punch you somewhere else and try to trick you up? Okay, so the trick is always, will this technique work versing versus a non-compliant opponent, Vanco? That's, that's a, an acronym which you can use and just to remind yourself, one day it'll become a verb. Let's Vanco this technique, man. <laughs> Let's see if it really works against a non-compliant opponent. So the beauty of, the beauty of uh, karate is that when you retire from your fight career, you have another 50 years ahead of you of research and understanding. And the more you look into this, uh, this whole thing, um, the better you get. Now, when we talk about uh, Miyagi Chojun's principle of Kaisai no Gendi, you know, he, if you read the book, it, he talked about Toki tomu subito no Gendi. Toki tomu subito no Gendi. That means the tying and untying of knot points, the principles behind tying and untying of knot points. And he described that there are two types of technique. It's like scripture. You know, it says, um, you know, playing with serpents. On the surface, it means picking up a snake. On the deeper meaning, it means the serpent, the spinal energy in the body where the meditation draws that energy up. So there's an inner and an outer meaning of everything. And in kata, there's what we call hyomengi. Hyomen is the front or the visible external techniques. And then there's kaisaigi, or there's the hidden techniques behind those techniques. And today I want to look at a few of those. Is it more about creating the habit with with it, with the bunkai to react with the application? Um, yes and no. I, I'd, I'd say no more than yes because if you try to create a particular habit with every technique and you've got like 20 carters with an average of 25 techniques, well, then you're going to have to push yourself to learn five, 600 hab habitual techniques in that respect. I know you're probably not talking about that. But more to the point, I think what is really important is to understand movement principles and apply those principles. And that's what Kaisai means. It's the principle behind breaking it down so that when you a certain situation arises, you 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 don't habitually respond in a set way. You habitually respond with a, a principle, okay? And one of the best principles, of course, is the Kung Fu movement. And you see people who minimize karate, they'll look at Pinan 5, for example, and they, I'll say, well, that X block is a waste of time. It doesn't work. The reality is you see it all the time. You know, guys, look, you see Floyd Mayweather doing his peekaboo style. Boom, look at the X in my arm create that X all the time. The X block is simply bringing the hands together. And when your hands are together, you'll do a lot better than if your hands are apart. We even have gone through periods in the dojo where we've, we've encouraged people for months at a time. So when they're doing the Kumite to keep their hands together and just see what comes of it. Just moving the hands like that, you create a really powerful wall. Okay, so I just want to play with a few possibilities. But before we do, just a couple of things. Uh, if you're around Sydney area, July 15, I'm doing a seminar down in Cronulla. Uh, July 15, Cronulla at Jim Sheedy's uh, self-defense studio. Jim and I go back. Actually, we met through my first book. And he was a member of a uh, Taekwondo group. Had some amazing guys in that group. Really good guys. Uh, and... They, the book was compulsory reading for their black belts, and I've kept in touch with Jim until these years later. Jim's very close mate of Benny the Jet and brings Benny out, other than COVID, brings Benny out every year for a seminar tour. So anyway, down in Sydney at, at Cronulla on July 15. Um, if you enjoy what we're doing here, remember that, you know, um, spread the love. If you can come along and join in with the Patreon family, the Patreon share a lot of love, and for that, I'm very, very grateful. Uh, really makes a difference. I know that I had a few Patreon 
uh, people joined, took advantage of the 50% and then disappeared again, took advantage of the 50% off the book and then they're gone like the wind, but that's okay. You know, everyone does what they can. Um, so anyway, if you're not subscribed to the channel, it's really getting up there. I'm really happy about that. I hit 60,000 views yesterday, which is great. But if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Subscribe, hit the little bell. If you have, hit the like, leave a message. So anyway, let's look at some of these possible applications for Pinan 2. Okay, so I'll just line up this camera, make sure everything's all right. About there. I'll drop it down a fraction so you can see our feet if it's necessary. So just move back a bit, Scotty. Okay, us. Us. So the first movement of the kata, let's do it together, Scotty. Us. The first movement is we just come here. One. There's that. And then under. Two. Now. Scotty, see how Scotty does it this way? That's the first technique. Retracting, this hand stays up to hold them at bay. The other way is I come here and I step across. Okay, they Oops. both have application. So Oops. let's look at that application just for starters. Remember, you don't get caught up in the line. So it doesn't mean that I'm here, there's someone there, and there's someone there. So stand there, Scotty. Oops. And I'm waiting, and these guys want to beat me up, and I say to him, Hang five while this guy beats me up, and then he throws a punch, Oof. and I step back, and I get rid of him, and I say to him, all right, now you're good to go. It doesn't work like that. Oof. The principle of kata is that it's a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, and the movement of the line simply takes you off the line of attack, out of the dead zone, into a zone where you can counter. Okay, so we're in this situation here. Here's the movement. Boom. It's a back stance. When you move back in a kata, what does it mean? It means you defend. Back stance, whoop, moving forward, you attack. So we're here like this. Us. I say to Scotty something that really upsets him. He wants to hit me. I'm already half here because if I'm in range and my hands are down, Us. it's pretty well guaranteed that I can't, I'm can't. i not going to be able to pick it up. Us. So the first thing I do is I, I, I bring my hands up. People go, well, why do you do this? He said, really? I mean, it's... That's a block that, why do you do this? Well, I almost defy anyone if someone comes flying in at you, if you're just going to use one arm and keep this one back here. It's not natural. That kata generally complies with what is natural and normal in the human psyche. Okay, so it means under normal circumstances, you'll find this two hand motion. Two hand here, two hands here, two hand kanku two-hand advance and in this kata you've got a two-hand motion as well Oops. so as scotty comes in with the punch oh, i'm just moving off to the side setting Oops. it up okay just go the other side so people can see Oops. Oh, there like that so see all i'm doing is i'm getting out of the line of fire i don't have to stick to the exact movement i'm sticking to the principle which is off the line of fire come forward a little bit off the line of fire hands stay together out of the way. Oh. There's my first movement. Look, I'll do it really, really slow. When I say do it really slow to Scotty, he still tries to knock my block off. He just can't help himself. So the movement, see what I mean? It was meant to be really slow. Okay, punch comes, bang, right there. I step off. There's the movement. The reality is maybe my hand will just come up like this. I still want to be conscious of being hit in the head here. Okay, then the movement is... There, so in the kata, it's like this. Here, it can be tetsui, it can be a uh, concussive blow to the carotid sinus, okay? And then you can come straight back there with a backhand or koken or tetsui. Close. One, two, see this? Bang, this is one of the, if you spent time just like, I think it's, I'm uh, not too sure how to pronounce your name. Shus, is it? K-U-S-S, K-Y-U-S-S, Shus. But anyway, I'll say Schuss Brooker. It was a good comment because the habit you need to develop is the habit of rapid fire response. You never want to be in the habit of he, he attacks and I move off and I go, come on, buddy, let's go home. It's too late for that talk. This has already escalated to orange, orange traffic light. We've gone from green to orange. Green is we're talking and we talk him down. We go, buddy, just go on home. Of course. Orange light is, this guy's really trying to hit me. Okay, red light is when he's really trying to damage you badly. Okay, so orange light is there is no more 
time for talk. So I'm here, I don't want trouble, my hands are up. Awesome. You pull. I move off to the side, whack, that's the first thing I do. Whack, 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 if you like, or whack, whack there, boom, boom, like this. One, two, three, four, five. And if you can shoot off those rapid fire techniques, move off to the side, like this. It, it, you can really do some concussive damage, awesome. and it kind of it catches you off guard. You awesome. know? But, uh, uh, you've got to get out of this idea we go like this. Uh, uh, uh. It's just like, give me a break. You know, it doesn't work like that. If you want to know how fast people can hit, go and look at some old videos of Manny Pacquiao and watch him tear people apart unbelievably fast. Okay, so here, punch comes and move off to the side. Oh, sorry. Yep. There, boom, move off to the side. Wham, wham. He comes again, maybe. Boom. See that? And move off to this side now. Keep coming. Boom. So that's another way you could look at going to the other side. So I've gone here, and I've gone this side, but he comes again. Boom. I'm going straight to the outside again. I've gone to the other side. See that? I've just changed angles. Oh. So from the outside now, see the first one is I'm on the inside. There. Second one, I'm on the outside. So I'm talking about elbow. If you don't break it, if you don't dislocate it, at least you get control like that, you've got two on one controls, you've got sh shots across there like this, you're on the outside now. And of course the best place in the world to be is behind you, with his balance broken, like that. Oops. Okay? So that's the first concept out of that initial cutter. Don't think that you're standing there and you think, oh you see these guys doing this and how stupid is that? Don't be like that. Realize that these guys that put these kata together weren't dills and they based it on Kaisei Kumite or they based it on two man Kumite. The Kumite came before the kata, unfortunately, with time because of uh, expediency and teaching. We left all the Bunkai uh, explanation and Kumite out, we just went with the kata. You know, they even have competitions now where it's just the kata. Okay, so we're in this position, the punch comes. I move off to the side. One, two, you can go there. You can, you can keep those koken, heisho, tetsui, shuto, all these techniques fly them off because they, they come fast and they come as a surprise when they're shooting off at unexpected angles. Bus. Bus, Thanks for coming along, man. Jin dobre. Okay. The next step, so we've, we've come here. We've come here in this cutter, okay? We turn around with the kick. One, two, three. This way or this way. And then we turn with the kick. It doesn't mean you have to do that, of course. I can be here like this. The technique comes. Boom. I step off. One, two. And as I step off, I can kick straight there. Boss. I can use exactly the same principle. Kick there or kick there with a back kick, which is really what you're doing in the cutter. Okay, so it doesn't mean there's one guy there, one guy there, one guy there. It means, all the, the, as you know in Kumite, it's a mobile thing. You're never always facing north-south. You're constantly moving. So in the, the space of it, as the punch comes, I move off to the side. I come in here, bang, and there's a nice little back kick there perhaps. Awesome. So as you do this cutter, try and see it in terms of dealing with a, you know, a uh, non-compliant opponent, a Vanco versus a non-compliant opponent, uh, and also dealing in terms of a single opponent, not multiple opponent. It's very important that you see in those terms, and things will mean a lot more. Sora, nice to see you, man. Was good on you. Well, I'll get going if you've only got 20 minutes. Okay. Then we do the kick, and then we move down. We've done enough of those before, and then we come through here. Okay. Nukite. Nukite is the Hyoman Gi. Gi means technique. Shingi Tai. Gi means waza, technique. Gi is just another way to say waza. Hyoman Gi means the, the technique, the visible technique on the outside is a Nukite. But the reality is, how many times have you used a nukate ever in your life, other than in karate training? You never use it. But 
there are some applications which I want to go over. Hey, Us, look at this. You like this T-shirt? You like this T-shirt, Dave Cummins? I'm glad you came along. Dave runs the Young Lions at the Lurens Cork Dojo. Us. Cool T-shirt, huh? Us. No, he can't have it. <laughs> no, he Just did. Right, yeah. no, huh? no, you can't have it. Okay, so we've got this spear hand. Well, what is a spear hand? So I'm here again. The technique comes in. He goes, oh, I knock it down. I'm not going to go here. I'll just go uh, like this. Okay, so spear hand can be a red light situation. Drive the thumb in the eye. You've only got to look for the best techniques by looking at the rules, that the techniques that aren't permitted in things like uh, MMA. And they can't even fight with their hand, fingers open, facing their opponent. They're not even allowed to do that. If the fingers are open, the hand has to be vertical. They can't point because of the danger. And how many times have you see an MMA fight where they're just in the process of it, the finger goes in the eye, and they stop for five minutes and try and give him a chance to get his vision back. That's how effective it is. Boys. Okay, so I'm here like this. Boom, he can either throw the punch or he goes to grab. Boys. And remember, one of the best things you can ever do when people try to grab you is what? Don't let them grab you. <laughs> okay, a stitch in nine stays and saves nine. So... When Scotty tries to grab me, I'm just going to move and don't let him grab me. He grabs Oops. me. I don't ever want to let him grab me. Oops. Okay? So he goes to grab me. I knock it down, and there's my spear hand. Look. But instead, I'm going in the eye. Thumb in the eye. Oh, see the thumb? In the eye. Oops. You drive that far enough in. I can see it. Yeah. Drive that far enough in, and it, it, it's... Devastatingly effective. I'll tell you a story later if I remember. Of if you don't want to go on the eye, you can go on the throat. Okay, I did that once where I grabbed the side of the neck there. See that? It was a C grip. I grabbed the side of the neck and I pulled the guy into an elbow. That's very effective as well. Bang, like that. Um, and also, considering the next technique that we have, which is the turn. In the cutter, okay. Oops. So we've come down the middle here. We've gone spear hand. We're turning into the cutter, like that, okay. And then back down the middle. So where there's a turn, there's a throw, or I like to say where there's a twirl, there's a hurl, okay. So he goes to grab me, boom, bang. I drive my thumb into his throat, but I use that grip now and spin, and I throw him down like that. Oops. Okay, again. So I'm there, he throws, I mean, he grabs, but there's my spear hand. Yes. But my spear hand goes past so that my thumb drives into his trachea. My, my grip grabs his carotid sinus. See, that is very effective. Yes. Or I can drive there into the, into the eye. Yes. Okay? He, he's, he's crazy. He still tries to grab me. So as he grabs me, I'm going to pull, step, and there's my turn in the cutter. And finish, stay there, stay there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm glad you didn't see that. <laughs> oh, that was violent. What have we got? So, where there's a turn in the cutter, we come down the middle. The turn is what we're after. We come in, we grab, pull here, bring that leg forward, and then I turn. When you, throw, when you do a throw, think of the body replacement theory, which we've spoken about. If I try to throw Scotty anywhere except where I am right here, it's very difficult. Of course. But if I think in terms of throwing Scotty right where I am, I don't want to throw him over here or over here or over there. I want to put him right where I am. So all I do is I get out of the way and put him exactly where I am, and I have control over that throw a lot better. Of course. Okay. Another good point, we've, we've gone through the applications of the shuto. We did a whole session on it last week. Then the next one is this here. We come down, we're heading back down the middle in this position. Okay? Once again, we bunkai, we break it up. We look at it, we think in terms of the possibility by working with a partner in what's called uh, kaisai kumite. Okay? Or you could call it bunkai kumite. Won't, you can call it anything you want. They're just words. Okay, so the situation is like this again. He, he goes to grab or punch. 
Once again, I'm moving off, or he maybe tries to punch me in the head. Boom, I'm coming in with that initial movement out of Taikoku, I mean, pin out number two again. And look, I use this block as a blow. Yes. That was the block. That becomes a blow. So I drive that block right across his chest. Yes. Okay. Maybe he tries to grab or hit me with that one. Boom. I'm doing this, and look, this is where this technique comes in now. I take behind and I work the push-pull principle. Push-pull is always better than push-push or pull-pull. I'll go around here so you can see a little bit. Okay, so I'm here. He goes to hit me, boom, I block, and I leave that hand up. And this hand, look, this is the technique I'm doing out of the Carter, remember? Push. One, two. One, two. Okay, one. I take that up, two, and I hit behind, and I keep my body weight going forward. Can he hit me with that? Yeah, maybe, but I can tell you now, if this is done at full force, I actually did this exact technique once to someone. I love that, I love that I've actually tried it, and it works, okay? But I did this once to a guy, and he literally tried to eye gouge me. I've got to tell you this story. He tried to eye gouge me. Oh, it's Kevin. Thanks for coming along, man. Hope you're enjoying the book. Um, this guy, I, the situation arose. He said that no one hasn't answered his technique. He was pretty cocky. But I think he was cocky in because he'd been kind of taught to be that by the people who taught him. But anyway, he said, no one has an answer to what he does. I said, well, I'm old and gray. My eyes wasn't that long ago. I think I have an answer. He said, what is it? And I said, well, you do it. Rather than talk about it, you do it, and let's see if I've got an answer. So he came in with this technique, and I did exactly this technique. Arm goes up, acts as a block, push his weight back, and my leg, my hand went right behind his leg, and my head was on his chest. And he tried to eye gouge me. I, I cox combed it off. He tried to gouge with the other hand. Cox combed it off again, and in my head, I'm I'm not, you know, thinking, but you know, under pressure, thought happens at the speed of light. So I knew that if he did it again, that was the trigger. So he did it again, and bang, I took it down. And so you wonder, is there a possibility when I'm in this position here, can he eye gouge me? Can he punch me? I can tell you, it's not going to happen when he is five foot in the air Oops. because you're pulling the leg, pushing the head, and his whole body goes, boom, and that's exactly what happened. And he, you know, Oops. didn't have a break for him, so it was his problem. So I'm here like this. This is the situation, okay? The kata here, that movement, notice, we drop down. We don't drop our head and look down. We drop our head forward. That's the push-pull. The head forward pushes, the arm pulls. So I'm here like this, and then, look, I just push the head, pull the leg, and I just tend to fall over. Push. Of course, a good guy who's experienced with this will make it infinitely more difficult for you to take down, but those people represent a very small percentage of the population. So in reality, kata were designed not to deal with skilled martial artists. They were designed to deal with unskilled bullies. So this is a very, very practical technique. It doesn't take much. Here's the, the key to it. Look, my foot is on the outside of his foot. I can't be like this. His left leg, my left leg. It won't work because it's too far to reach. Okay? So in the kata, in the kata, it's because I'm in this position that my leg's forward. As he punches me, boom, that's when I can make it work with this leg forward. Okay, but even with that leg forward, I now need to keep pushing with my head and pull so that the other leg can come through. I'm being a little bit nervous about the edge of the wall there. So I'm here like this, punch comes, boom, there. You can come past, then you can do what you want there, whether you determine whether it's green, orange, or red light situation. Okay, so that's that technique. The thing about it is, I mean, the, the thing about it is here, if I say to Scotty, don't let me take you down, he, there are infinite ways that he can start to defend it. 
Right. But for every defense, there's a counter. For every counter to the defense, there's a counter to the counter. So you can go on infinite, infinitely. But the most important thing is maintain posture and maintain push-pull. So I have my hands pulling. I have my head. You see what happened? He just starts to fall down. Plus, you can't stop it. It's very hard to stop. Plus. One of the best ways to stop it is if his left arm, which is over my shoulder, Plus. he actually puts it under my armpit. Plus. Not that one, the other armpit. Yes, he puts it under there. Now, it's much harder. And, and to add on to that, he pushes my head away. Yeah, so now, he's reduced my ability to push-pull. So that's the best defense for this situation is the left arm goes under my armpit to stop me from dropping down. See his arm under my armpit? And the right hand pushes my head to counterbalance the push-pull. So in that situation, he does that, I would literally abandon and I would go, go to here and go the other direction to clear the hand off the head. Boys. Okay, so that's that particular technique. This is worth hours and hours and hours of research. Boys. Coming in this situation, from there, the foot goes next to it, and look, my elbows are strong. Now I can push, pull, but I can also drag. Watch what I do with his leg. As I push, pull, I start to drag his leg backwards. Oh man, I can't <laughs> tell you. It's so good, right? Well, you can't, I can't do it. Yeah. You yeah. feel you feel completely vulnerable. There's virtually nothing you could do. Of course. Okay. So that's that technique. Marco, good to see you, man. So if you've got any comments about that, I'm really open to discussion. You always you guys always come up with discussion. I don't know if Mike Clark's here. I sent uh, Mike Clark his copy of the book. And I believe, according to my tracking, it arrives today. So hopefully the only reason he's not here is because he's in a coffee shop reading his book. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we've got that technique. Boom. Front kick, bang, there. Front kick, bang, and we step through two arms. I want to now move on to this last technique in the cutter because it's one of my favorite techniques simply because you can find application for it in a number of ways, but it also illustrates the value of block, lock, blow, throw. If you've got a copy of the book, you see this illustration on page 201. That's what I mean by block, lock, blow, throw. It's um, a concept I came up with, but I'm sure not, nothing's original in the world. Everything existed beforehand. Okay, so the whole idea of block, lock, blow, throw. So we've come down, we're in this situation, and we're going to turn here. One, let's do this, Scotty. Boss. We're here. Other foot forward. Boss. We're here in this cutter. Boss. We'll turn, block, knife hand, Boss. and step. Now you know where we are, right? Step. Turn, knife hand, step. Okay? What does it mean? Um, and if you've ever trained with me, you would have gone over this. The first rule that it, it reminds you of is that when he throws a front kick at me, I never want to block with the same side because it can turn into a roundhouse. Boss. Okay, the other thing is I never want to block with both hands down because he pops me in the nose with his, Boss. Nose with his hand. Boss. Bang. So one of the oldest street, street fighting tricks in the world is you look at his groin, you point at his groin, Boss. I hate guys like you, he'll kick you in the nuts, and you go boom, and he drops his hands and you punch him in the face. Boss. Okay, so whenever you block a kick, make sure you block with the correct hand and make sure that uh, the opposite hand is up. Boss. So in, in terms of uh, Kuss's, Schuss's, um question about habits, that is one habit that needs to be trained and drilled and drilled and drilled. I want to get out of the habit of blocking with that hand. You get away with it every now and then, but if it becomes habitual, your opponent picks up on that very quickly. What I always have to do is block that kick with this hand. See that? And that way, if he flicks it up and hits me in the head, my hand, I have my cock's comb up. Boss. Okay? So let's look at it now. He's going to kick me in the groin. Boss. I drop my hand, he punches me in the face. With this hand. Boss. Boom. Bang, bang. That's the oldest trick. Boss. Boom. Bang. You use the front hand generally because it's so much quicker. 
Boss. Again, he goes, boom, I drop my hands, he punches me in the face. Boss. So, we always have to be conscious of that. So when he throws the kick now, boom, I want to make sure my hand is up and I can follow. So in the kata, it goes one, two, one, two. We look at it, the hyomengi, the external technique, is a downward block, a spear hand, nukite, or a downward block, an upper block with the open hand. The hidden technique is we block the kick, but the hand comes straight up because we know that he's dirty trick, he's going to kick you low, punch high. Oh, so we're here like this, he throws that kick, punches high, boom. My hand comes straight up. Notice, I, even though in the kata it's one hand, you want to develop the habit of bringing two hands up. Um, I wish I knew how to pronounce your name, Chus. Yeah, I think it's Chus or Kus. But the more I think about your question, the more I realise actually it's a good question because not that it wasn't, but it makes me realise how... Uh, valuable um, what you're saying is in terms of habit because everything is habit everything you rule the way you clean your teeth the way you lie in bed the way you eat your food the way you walk the way you talk the way you drive all ritual okay so the, the trick to life is developing the right habits habits of good behavior not bad behavior okay so we're going to look at this now one two we step through three we have a block a block a block, a block, a block. Why would we end a carter in six blocks? Doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, here's where we're going to turn that block into a lock. Block, lock, blow, throw. You can turn the block into a blow as well. So the kick comes, bang, punch comes, and I block up. Okay, now watch what I do here. The next technique, one, two, is an upper block. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to bring the hand over and lock it in my own hand. See that? Bus. And I make sure I have connection. What's connection? Connection is where I put more and more of my body controlling less and less of his. So right now, I have my hands locked up. Notice I'm trying not to use grips because if you use grips, you fatigue very, very quickly. If you've ever grappled and you start to grab geese in no time flat, you can't even use your hands anymore. So I don't use grips which is muscular strength. I use bone, which is uh, um, uh, Archimedean leverage, Oops. okay? And his elbow is buried on my chest. So right now, he tries to punch me with the other hand. Very hard to do. He tries to get out of this. And just even with, in the process of getting out, he starts to fall down himself. I wasn't Oops. twisting. But I lock this position in. I bury his elbow on the top of my sternum. I lock my arms in. Oops. And I tie it up. Oops. Now I have seen this technique where it's like this. Kick comes. Punch comes. And I do this. Okay? The problem with that is, get out of it. Get out. Get out. Get out. Okay, if I do it the way I do it, get out, get out, <laughs> get out. Go on, do it, get out, be serious. No, no, stand up. Get out. No. You can't get out. Work. If you go this way, which is the common way that this is taught, and it'll work nine times, six times out of ten, it won't necessarily work against a strong non compliant opponent. The problem with this is the leverage is different. Of course. I can't lock his elbow up. And the key to getting out of this is escape the elbow. So all he does is push, pull the elbow, bang, and he's out. As soon as he's at that point, I have zero control anymore. But if I go this way, now he push, see the difference in the arm? I pull this down there, and his elbow is higher than my elbows. Or if I pull this here, I can drop my elbows, but he can just posture up, and it's much stronger. Push. Okay? That's a really key point. This is why I only ever teach it one way. Kick comes. One, two, and I step through here. Okay? One, two, I'm sorry. Again, I use the opposite arm. Push. Okay? Then this hand, this gets confusing a little bit. His right hand, I'm blocking with right arm. Left hand comes over his, under mine. And then I lock it in. Okay? The block has become a lock. 
All right, I can hit with an elbow strike there, see that? The blow becomes a throw. Stand up. So if you look really carefully, this is my position. Is it realistic? Punch me in the head. Punch me in the head. <laughs> you gotta real you gotta look at it in realistic terms. And realistically, I'm not just standing there talking. Us. I'm really getting control. So I dig in, look. I'm pushing, look at the, his body, even as all I do is just flex my whole shape to get control of him. And he's already going down on the knee, and I haven't even started the lateral rotation. Us. I step forward. No, that's shoulder. And can't do anything. He Us. goes down. So that's the last technique. Come and join in, Scotty. Us. Thanks, Scotty, for coming. You can imagine how difficult that would have been if I had no partner to demonstrate it on. Um, but the whole thing, yes, exactly, Soren. Soren says the Carter shows the principle through the example of the technique. Oh, Soren, thanks for coming, man. Hope all's well. Oh, it's Aiden. Hey, how are you, buddy? Remember Aiden, everyone? Chris, has your book arrived? Us, I'm tracking it. Let me see if I've, oh, I've closed the tracker. Okay, so remember a couple of key, key points. Hyomengi, kaisaigi. Gi means technique. Hyomengi means external visible technique. The technique you do is not necessarily the deepest meaning. It still has, it still has value. It still can be used as that. But... There's a deeper technique, a, a deeper meaning to it as well, which has uh, a deeper purpose behind it. Um, remember that Kaisei, the principle of Kaisei, or unraveling the knots, finding the key knots in, in the kata, uh, based, are based on Kaisei kumite, or two mandrills, not one mandrill. Kata were born from two mandrills. Two man drills weren't born from kata. It didn't go that way. It's the other way around. Uh, so anyway, I hope I hope you got a little bit out of that. Remember that nukate is not just a nukate. It's a thumb in the eye. Look, just turn face me this way. Oops. And yeah, look, it can be a thumb in the eye. My hand goes straight past and you drive the thumb in the eye. Okay. It can be a carotid sinus. It can be a trachea crush here. Come forward a little. Trachea crush and uh, carotid sinus grab. There, yeah, like this. See that? Grab, grab. Very a lot of pressure point there. You hit with elbows. Okay, it also works for a throw as well. Us, Daniel. Good to see you, man. Um, tell me more about you, Brooke. Uh, is it shoes? Just write a phonetic way to pronounce your name because I hate getting people's names wrong. Is it Kyus or Shus? But how do you might go about sharing um, interpretations? You need to get a partner you can trust, Shus. You need to get a partner that you can trust and work with and develop the technique from there. You do multiple repetitions. You get yourself a little logbook. Is your logbook there? The yes. Yeah, grab the logbook. Um, you get yourself a logbook and you keep track of the number of repetitions that you do. All right, this is Scotty. Scotty comes and trains sometimes. And there's the logbook, as you know. And in the back, you've got these pages where you write the detail of the technique. And every time you do 10, you fill in the square. And when you finish, you've done 1,000. And I guarantee if you're in a situation where you want to share this sort of stuff, but you don't have a dojo that is receptive, if you did a thousand with someone you trust, if you do a thousand of them with someone you trust, uh, and then all of a sudden start to be able to demonstrate it, people will take notice. Kies. Is it Kies? Kies. Okay, thanks. Is this Bunkai is soul size? Well, I don't know. I The, the lock certainly is soul size. Uh, and like I've said, I counted all techniques in soul size books. And 70% of them were locks, throws, 
and groundwork. Only, I think, 22%, if I remember right, were techniques that were permissible in tournaments. But soul size bunkai were soul size. You work, I create my bunkai based on soul size principles of movement. And that's what I think we all should do. Soul Sai was very adamant that you have to be original in your in your karate based on sound principles. Um, people minimize Soul Sai because he didn't really d demonstrate a lot of that flowery sort of stuff. In fact, there's one well-known Kyogushin organization. I believe one of the guys at the head of that, um, uh, one of the guys at the head of that actually said that Soul Sai, he, in his opinion, Soul Sai got it wrong. This is a guy who's never won a tournament or never done anything in his life. Um, so that's well, a good question, Matus. Is this Bunkai, is it soul size? I don't know. Um, but I'm 100% I'm certain that if soul size asked me to demonstrate Bunkai out of Pinan 2 and I did what I'm doing here, he'd approve. Because soul size said there is only one right way to do any technique, but if the way you do it works and knocks him out, that's the right way. So Solsai was always open to the need to uh, use your brain, create and experiment based on solid foundation principles. Well, I've got those log books. If you, I, I'll have to put it up online. Um, uh, if you go to my website online, I think this is, see if I can remember the link. That could be the link. Very nice standing figure four lock, tight knot. Ah, oh, figure four lock, tight knot, yes. Good on you, Tommy. Thanks for coming along. I don't know what your background is, but what you said is right. You get that figure four lock. And this figure four lock, I've got to tell you, I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm, I'm edging this down so you can see. But look, this is the figure four lock here, okay, the one that we're doing. Now, if we go to the ground right now, Feet here, head there. No, other way. Sure. But lie that way. Oof. Okay, so exactly the same position. And a lot of guys defend on the ground with what we call the prayer position. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. But what I need to do is control his head movement and push that to the ground. See that? And I can get this, and there's my figure four lock. Now remember, I brought it to my chest. I'm letting it go because it's really a lot of pressure. In the stand up, I control with my chest. On the ground, I control with my head. See that? Yes. And now what I can do is, if, if, if Scotty's hips start to lift up, that means the pressure is increasing. See that? So, and look at my wrist. I think this is another magic thing. My wrist, look, without moving anything, my elbows are stationary, my head's stationary. All I'm going to do is straighten my wrist and watch what happens to Scotty's body and reaction. He taps. I didn't move anything else. All I did was straighten my wrist. So that's really, really important. Don't forget that upper block in the cutter is this arm that can become a blow. So if I'm in this situation, I can hit with the head. I can push my elbow into his neck as well. Slide down here. Finish. So that's a good point there that that gentleman made. Uh, that was Chris Tommy Tommy Adelhall. Yeah, that figure four is a standing figure four. When no, no, stay there. When you're on the ground, you have the ground, so you can use the ground. When you're standing, you don't have the ground, so you've got to lock it in a different way. And the way you lock it in is through connection with you see the elbow on my body through connection with the old body. The other thing I'm not doing is I'm not. Oh, yep. sorry. You're right. When you do this, you get a good grip with the wrist. See this? Look, I'm doing exactly the same technique, but I, I don't use grips because I don't like my arms to get burned up when I'm grappling for a long time. So I use leverage of my bones. But if you wanted to add a grip, you come down here, look. And now, just by adding that grip, Scotty's tapping because of the pain that this creates. The pain this way, the pain this way. Relax the wrist, relax, relax. See, bending it this way as well. You go this way, 
go this way. Both ways are really, really, <laughs> and people say, oh, that stuff doesn't work. Trust me, it works it all works. the time. Works. It works all the time. <laughs> okay, Matus, you have, this is karate, what is karate? Advanced karate. Forget Masayama's essential karate. That's basically a mix of the others. It's especially what is karate. It's essentially taken bits out of those. Um, I don't even know. We've tried to follow up and see who owns the copyright of it. Um, Gaza says, on you, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> but, Matus, if you have a spare weekend, what I would do is this. I would divide a page into five columns. And I would put numbers one, two, three, four, five. Number one is the kick range. Number two is a punch range. Number three is headbutt, elbow range. Number four is the stand up grapple range. And number five is the ground range. Okay? Then what you get through the book and count every unique technique. Don't count the same technique. There's, you know, like you might find Uchiyuki in there 20 times. There's no point in counting it 20 times. You just count it once. But you go through all three books, count all the techniques, and divide them up into those columns, and I cross my heart and hope to die, you'll find that it weighs very heavily towards the ground and the stand-up grappling ranges four and five. And then you know, see, Sol Sai had his, his, um, his license, teaching license in Aiki Jiu-Jitsu. He spent years doing judo. Those sort of principles that he used weren't thrown out simply because of tournaments. Tournament just represented the sporting aspect of karate, but there are so many other aspects. Anyway, I'll wind it up. Like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much beauty in these kata, and this pin and number two especially, you can lock it in. The difference is how do you want to express those applications? Is every technique you do in the application a strike and a hit? Or do you want to flow in and grab and transition from the outer one and two ranges into range three, four, and five to the ground? You have to decide that before you work on the techniques. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody coming along. Thanks, Scotty. Of course. We've got to course. go to train in a couple of hours. Of course, that's right. So I um, appreciate Scotty coming along. It was really good of him because, as you could imagine, it would have been a bit tricky uh, demonstrating some of those principles um, without a partner. Um, if you haven't got your book, get along to budokarate.com. There's a whole section in this in this book uh, on Kaisai. Look, see this? Kaisai no Gendi. It's, it's unbelievably fascinating. Scotty's reading the book at the moment, even over the page there. See Kaisai, Bunkai, uh, Bunkai Kaisai and Oyo. Okay? So um, get your copy. I've covered mine. Thanks, Scotty. Of course. Thank Thanks, you. everybody, for coming Thank along. Course. Look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, like, share. That's the most important thing. The most, the most valuable thing you can do to, to help the, the site is to tell your friends about it, send them a link, invite them along and say, check this guy out. He's really good looking, and he's the one working with Shihan Cameron. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> okay. Um, but I hope you enjoy it. Us, Frederick, thanks for being there the whole time. Thank you. Thanks for all your hard work. Us, Harry, good on you. Matus, thank you very much. Dzień dobry. Kevin, thanks, man. And Billy, Bill Stewart, thank you for coming along. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't arrived, but I will look into it. Even as we talk, I'm going to check that out right away. And I'll see where the code is. Oh, it's very possible. Um, what? Which city are you in, Bill? You're in Florida, I thought. Isn't that correct? I'll have to follow that up. Us. Thanks, Andrew. Good on you, man. Anyway, look, thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming along. Us, Scotty. Us. Come and say goodbye. Us. Don't be a shrinking violet. Us. <laughs> See you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Us. Us. Thank you. <laughs>